In the last video, we started working on a Pinterest clone in Figma, making a quick wireframe to understand how we lay out the main elements in the home page. In this video, we start working on creating a component for each element in the Pinterest home page. We'll create a component for Pinterest's header and a component for the create pin button. You'll find a link to this file in the description and first comment. It's a Figma community file that you can duplicate and you'll have a copy of it in your drafts folder. By creating components for each single element, when we adjust them, the changes we make are updated to every copy we took of the main component. Also, components make it easier to create a prototype. We'll start by the header, but we can try to recreate the Pinterest logo in Figma. It's unnecessary work, so to save time, I'll just grab it from a community file. I will press the shortcut key command forward slash for quick actions, type community, and the community page will open in a new tab. I'll write social icons in the search bar and find a file that has the Pinterest logo. Duplicate it in my drafts folder, copy the logo and paste it into our file. If it's not a component, turn it into one. The Pinterest header has this home button which does the same thing as pressing on the logo, but I think they wanted to make it obvious that you're at the home page. So in our design, I decided to remove it for a cleaner look and make the Pinterest logo a bit larger instead. So I will select the logo in the design panel, frame options. I'll make sure the constraint proportions is selected and I'll change the width to 60 pixels. We'll make the search bar ourselves. So I'll press T to grab the text tool and type search. The font we'll use is Roboto regular 25 pixels. We'll give it the gray one color style that we took from the screenshot in the last video. Press Shift A to add an auto layout frame to it. Give the frame the gray two color style. Rounded corners of 50 pixels, left padding of 25 pixels and 15 pixels top and bottom. And for the search icon, I will press O to draw a circle, remove its fill, and add a stroke of 4 pixels to it. Then I'll press P to grab the pen tool and draw a short line, make its stroke 4 pixels as well. I will select them both and union selection. Give it grey one color style and finally drop it into the auto layout frame of the search bar. Adjust the size and placement manually and turn the search bar into a component and give it a name. I also made another decision to drop the notifications and messages icon and later put them inside the drop down menu or remove them. This is very subjective as I don't think of Pinterest as a tool to connect with people and the notifications most of the time I ignore them. So I'd rather have a cleaner and more focused interface. For the profile image placeholder, I'll just make a circle and since this is an important part of the app as it takes you to the boards and pins page, I'll make it the same size as the logo and also for symmetry, so 60 pixels. And for now, I'll just give it a green color and add an initial letter above it, then select them both and frame the selection. Also turn this into a component and name it profile image. We can also add a new variant to it by selecting the component and in the design panel variants, press on add new variant button. Name the variant image, remove the initial and add an image instead. Double click to select the circle. In the design panel, go to fill options, press on the color, then change it from solid to image and select an image from your computer. If it's a small image, you can leave it to fill. If it's a larger image, select crop instead and you can manually edit the size of the image. Now for the drop down button, I will draw it with the pen tool while pressing and holding the shift key. Make sure the stroke is round and give it a rounded corner of two pixels and a gray one color style. Then I will adjust the size from the design panel and turn it into a component. Next, I will grab an instance of each of those components, select only instances, press Shift A to add an auto layout to them and call it header. In the design panel, auto layout settings, I will align them to the center. Add a padding of 50 pixels right and left and 30 top and bottom. Then I will set the items to space between so that they would spread inside the header. I will add a fill to the header and give it the main white color. All the elements inside it will have a fixed width. Except for the search bar, we will select it and change its tree sizing options from fixed width to fill container so that it would change in size according to the size of the header. Then I'll set the distance between the items to 20 pixels. And if you want to make adjustments to any of the elements, make it to the main component and it will update in the header as well. Finally, turn the header into a component and call it header. Next, we'll make a component for the create pin button. I'll grab the pen tool, draw line, copy it, rotate it, and select both lines and union selection. Make sure the corners are rounded and give it the main black color. 
I will create a 60 pixel circle, give it the main white color and frame them together. Also the button in the Pinterest design has a shadow underneath it. So I will select the circle and add a drop shadow to it. The shadow does not go in one direction. So I will remove the X and Y directions and make the blur 30 pixels. Then I will turn it into a component, give it a name. As for the help button, you can make it in the same way, but I will skip it for a cleaner look and move it into the drop down menu. In the next video, we'll finish making the components for Pinterest homepage by creating the pin component.